Hi, I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. Welcome to the introduction to the Aero Injector. This is our Aero Injector unit sold by Aero Conversions, which is part of Sonics Aircraft LLC. It's a very simple uh, throttle body injector. Uh, some people mistakenly call it a carburetor. It's not a carburetor, it's a throttle body injector. It really only has two moving parts. The throttle slide, which carries the mixture needle with it, and the mixture control. You have cable controls for both the throttle and the mixture. Your mixture cable will come in through this bracket to secure the sheath, and then the cable will come down and it will attach to this arm. Mixture is off when the arm is pulled in, and the mixture goes full rich as the arm is pushed out. Very simple system. The throttle is also a uh, cable system. It is a pull-to-open system, so as the throttle cable is pulled, it opens the throttle slide. In order to operate a pull-to-open system, you'll need a lever such as this. This is our Aero Conversions throttle quadrant, bolts to your instrument panel or your airframe, and you can see it's in the open position right now. Move the lever, this would be pulling the lever back, would push the cable and close the throttle. You push the handle forward, Full throttle, it pulls the cable and opens the throttle. It is a pull to open system. If your particular aircraft needs a push to open system uh, on a throttle knob like you might see in a Cessna type aircraft or some other home builds, you will need to make a reversing device that will reverse the direction uh, because the uh, cable that attaches to the throttle slide itself needs to pull to open. So you need to make some kind of a bell crank on here to reverse that direction so that your uh, push to open system becomes a pull to open system uh, at the throttle body itself. Just a few parts make up the uh, throttle body. We'll start out with the throttle body itself here, the main body of the uh, aero injector. This is the throttle slide right here. You notice as it slides back and forth, it opens and closes the air orifice. Throttle closed, throttle open. And you'll also notice that as it moves, it is also carrying this needle with it. So as the throttle closes, it slides the needle in. As the throttle opens, it slides the needle out. Now that needle is tapered. And the taper acts in this fuel orifice here to meter the amount of fuel that's being injected into the airstream. So as the, the needle is pulled out, more and more of the taper is exposed which will allow more and more fuel to match up with the larger amount of air that's being allowed in by the throttle slide. As you close the throttle, the uh, taper closes the fuel orifice, again, matching the fuel flow to the amount of air that's being allowed in. Here's the needle itself, just to show you what they look like. Just a, a tapered needle, start out at full diameter, and then the taper starts uh, up here at this end, gets, steep, it gets more and more as the uh, taper goes to the uh, full rich end. The needles are numbered uh, 1, 2, 2.5, 3, and 4. Uh, the higher the number, the steeper the taper. So the higher number needles will be richer at the uh, wide open throttle end and uh, commensurately leaner at the uh, closed throttle or idle end. You'll use the proper needle to match your engine and you'll tune that in accordance with the aero injector manual and it talks about several steps. The first step in the tuning process will be to tune the uh, aero injector at wide open throttle. On our Sonics aircraft with an aero V engine you're going to want to look for a static RPM, tie the aircraft down, run the engine, warm the engine up, and then run the engine at full throttle. Your static RPM with our standard Sensenik propeller will be approximately 3,000 RPM static. Uh, you're looking for that, and you're looking for nice smooth running at wide open throttle uh, at that static RPM of about 3,000 RPM. Once you get that so that it'll run good at 3,000 RPM, you're going to want to use your mixture control and just gradually lean the mixture and watch what happens with both the engine operation and the exhaust gas temperature. 
What you're looking for is a slight rise in the exhaust gas temperature as you lean the mixture at full throttle. If you get a slight rise in EGT as the mixture is lean, that tells you that your mixture is lean enough. You're looking for approximately 100 degrees EGT rise before it starts to fall off as the mixture goes leaner and leaner. If you don't get an RPM rise, if the mixture, uh, as you lean it, the EGT starts to fall off immediately, you'll know that you're set too lean and you'll want to adjust that. And I'll talk about how to adjust it here in a second. Uh, if you get a huge RP, uh, uh, EGT rise, uh, several hundred degrees, the engine might not even run well if it's that rich, but what you're looking for there is an um, uh, excessively rich mixture and you'll need to lean it out. You uh, lean or richen the mixture by virtue of a set screw in the uh, throttle end. You'll use your hex key, simply an Allen wrench. There's a lock screw in here that you'll remove. We'll spin that out right now. There's your lock screw, which is a simple uh, set screw. And then in here, there is another hex key that is your needle carrier. Clockwise, we'll move the needle in, which is leaning the mixture. Counterclockwise moves the needle out, which is richening the mixture. When you get close, you're going to want to do this in very small increments, uh, an eighth of a turn at a time, maybe a quarter turn if you think you need a little bit more. Uh, small changes are better. If you do huge changes, a quarter turn, a half turn, full turn, uh, it's going to change the mixture so radically that you're not really going to be able to fine tune it. So you want to make sure that you do just an eighth turn at a time, uh, leaner or uh, richer. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to get that RPM set at the full throttle RPM, get your proper static RPM and that proper EGT rise uh, of about 100 degrees or so before the EGT starts to fall off as the mixture goes leaner and leaner. Once you get that set up, then you're going to want to check to see what it does at the low end, at your idle. It may be too rich, it may be too lean, uh, and you could adjust that by changing the needle itself. Remembering that the needles are numbered, the higher number needles are a steeper taper. So if you're okay at the top end, but you're too rich at the bottom end, you're actually going to want to go to a richer needle, a higher number. That'll uh, allow more fuel at the upper end, but it'll cut back the amount of fuel at the, the idle end. So uh, a rich idle mixture with a good top mixture means you need a richer needle. If you're good at the top end, but you're uh, too lean at the bottom end, you'll actually need a, a leaner needle. And again, you'll always start after you change needles, if you need to change needles, you'll always start by setting the high RPM setting first. Get your full throttle uh, setting correct so that you have proper static RPM and proper EGT rise as you lean, and then go back and check your low end. If you need to change the needle, uh, the easiest way is to start by marking the needle. Uh, you can see right here, I'm going to point at it where the taper starts. Uh, you're going to be looking at the far side of the needle, so you're going to put a mark on the needle that goes all the way around the needle right at that point, because when you look up into the aero injector while it's mounted on the engine, you're going to actually be seeing the non-tapered side of the needle. The tapered side goes towards the engine. So as you look up through the aero injector for tuning, you're going to see this non-tapered side of the needle, so your mark needs to go on the back side. You'll install the needle so that this mark is right at the edge of your uh, throttle slide. You'll be looking at it from this side. You'll put the mark right at the edge of the throttle slide there. That's your initial setting. Then you'll start your engine, warm it up, and get your high RPM setting so that you have the proper static RPM and the proper EGT rise as you lean. Then you can go back and set the low end. Once you get those balanced out so that everything's running the way you want, the last setting you'll do is your idle speed, and that's done with the idle stop screw, which is right here. All that is is a physical stop that stops the throttle slide from going uh, closed. The, the further in you uh, set the idle stop, the more opening you'll have when the throttle slide is against the stop. So if your idle speed is too low, you'll thread this idle stop in a little ways to make it open a little further. 
If your idle speed is too high, you can back that screw out a little bit and that'll allow the throttle to close a little bit more and bring your idle speed down. If you change anything, uh, you'll have to go back through and set everything starting again at the high RPM setting, then check your low RPM, and finally your idle speed. If you change the needle at all, you'll probably have to go back and, and retouch that idle speed as a last uh, setting because any change in the mixture needle will affect the uh, mixture at idle, which will expect, uh, affect the idle speed. So it's very simple, high RPM first, low RPM second, and idle speed last. Carburetor is very simple again, it just has a couple of moving parts, throttle slide with the needle carrier and your mixture control. The rest of the carburetor is simply your, your Delrin gasket that goes in here and then the cover plate which goes on and then uh, the other parts are the intake spigot. Uh, we have several different spigots available. Uh, these are uh, for the different uh, intake mounting. This is a hose type spigot that you'd use on an Aero V engine. Uh, also, uh, many other home built uh, aircraft engines have a hose type intake setup. We also have uh, spigots available that will bolt onto Lycoming or Continental engines with a, a bolt pattern. So, those are interchangeable to match the uh, installation you have. On the other side, the intake side of the carburetor, you have the uh, intake bell or the velocity stack, if you will. Uh, this channels the air into the throttle body. And then on this, you would mount uh, your air cleaner. Uh, Aero Conversion sells an air cleaner specifically for this installation. Uh, other home builders have used uh, K&N uh, air filters or other types that might fit on this uh, intake bell. So a very simple system, not too many parts. Uh, if you understand what it's doing and how it's doing it, uh, it's real easy to tune. Just take your time, follow the manual, and make small adjustments, and you'll get your uh, aero injector tuned in.